All right, we're here live from Matter Day High School. I'm Tom Plunkett, joined by Joe Minnick. We're here to witness the girls' soccer Division Five San Diego Section Championship, the Christian High School Panthers, the number two seed, going up against Horizon High School Panthers, the number one seed in the division. Joe, how are you feeling today? Uh, I'm I'm a little tired actually. I I just did the the last exciting game, but. Uh, I'm ready for some girls soccer now, Division Five Championship. All right, here we go. Christian is in blue, Horizon is in white, and the action has started. And we got two pretty good teams going up here. We got the one and two seed, as I said. You know, that's the way they draw it up when they made these brackets. They got these top two teams. They both had buys in the first round, and they both advanced with aggregate scores of seven to one in their previous two games. So uh, Horizon coming in with a record of 17-4-3. Christian coming in at 12-9-2. So both teams know how to win and put the ball in the net. Yeah. So far, a nice run by number 16, Deanna Taylor for Christian. Wait, is Christian? Christian is in the blue and Horizon Excuse is me. in the white. I'm so sorry. That was Heather Kaololi. I believe I said that right. At least I hope hope I did. I was looking at the wrong roster there when I said Deanna Taylor. Perfect day here for some soccer, if anything. And you don't hear very much this time of year, but it might be a little too hot. Yeah. They got the umbrellas out. Everybody's catching a little shade where they can because it is smoking out here today, people. Yeah, I just walked on that field, and let me tell you, I was on there for no more than probably 15 minutes, and I worked up a little bit of a sweat just standing there. And that's a clear by the horizon goalie there. Christian trying to retain possession, but horizon takes over, starting to drive the ball down the side of the field. It's out on Christian there. And it's going to be a throw in for Horizon. Here in high school football, or high school soccer, excuse me, 40 minute halves. We are starting here the first half for Matter Day High School. 38 minutes left here in the first half. Horizon versus Christian. Fans, you can watch highlights or replay of today's game in our on demand section. You can also buy the DVD or Blu-ray of today's game right now in our CIF San Diego TV store. Click on buy DVD and you can order today's game right now. Have a game that lasts a lifetime brought to you by CIF San Diego TV. So yeah. nice ball control here by Horizon here. And, uh, Christian's having a hard time of just getting a good possession off and getting control of the ball in order to make a run. And when they have done that, you know, Horizon's been good at the defense too, forcing Christian to play to that left side of the field right now. And you can make mistakes on that left side of the field when you're playing that close because the ball goes out of bounds. Horizon driving down into Christian territory, but the defense gets control of the ball, and Christian trying to advance it past midfield. That was Ashley Lyon there trying to move it forward. She's also going to throw the ball in. Oh, there. and a slip there by number 14 for Christian gives Horizon control of the ball, and once again, number 16, that's Heather Kaoloe. Passes and scores. Nice setup there by Horizon. Getting on the board here early. The center by Kaloe. And her teammate knocks it home for the score. That's going to make it one to nothing early on here. And that was number nine, Eden. Eden Don Dene. Eden Dene. Is Eden Dene. She knocked with the it goal. in. And she was wide open too when that cross pass was made by Kaloe. But. 
all credit can do, all, you know, cre a lot of credit of that goal goes to Chloe for the great run and the great awareness to pass it into the middle of the box like that. one nothing, Horizon on top. Less than five minutes into the game here from Matter Day High School. We got one on the board for Horizon. The Panthers striking early. And they're going to retain possession of the ball here as their goalie stepping way out, 50 yards out from the goal to kick this ball. Showing no fear. And Christian picks up the loose ball and they're driving down the field. Yeah. And we saw this last game, the, uh, you know, in the boys' Division Three championship that Cathedral was able to go up on top one nothing early. And uh, what ended up happening is the Saints had to press almost the entire game. And so I think Christian's going to have to do that now in order to knock this one back up. Ball at midfield. Christian looking to advance it, but... Pass is just a little too out in front. It's going to go out of bounds. Horizon's going to get it back. Yeah, Nikki Waynemeyer. Waymeyer. She's the captain of the squad. Just a little too far for her. Christian again with the ball around midfield. Passes it too long, and so it's going to be a Horizon throw in. Taking the throw in for Horizon. That's. Senior captain number eight, Megan Haynes. Remember, he's going to make her come back a little bit. Here's the throw in. Nice throw in off the back of the head, though, by Heather Kaloe. Now, Christian starting to press here a little bit. Here's Kaloe again, the give and go to number eight. Back to Chloe. Chloe, another great run. Bends it. It was almost the same combination there. Chloe to number eight, Eden. That was a nice confident stop there by Allie Beezer, the goalkeeper, sophomore for Christian. She stepped right up in the hole, knocked the ball down, and kicked it out to midfield for her defense. Yeah, it was probably crucial too because uh, once again, Eden had a wide open net. And Horizon doing a good job early on here, putting some pressure on that Christian defense. They've had it deep in the zone a couple of times. And that's where the bulk of the action has been here so far in the first half. Yeah, very, very a great job of Horizon so far just controlling the ball. A good giveaway or a steal there by Christian. Now Christian's going to have their first legitimate opportunity with a throw in here around the 20 yard line. Ashley Lyon on the throw in. Ball was headed by her teammate Nikki Waymeyer, but ball was picked up by the goalie for Horizon. That's Julia Degnan. 32 minutes here. Left in the first half, Matter Day High School, Horizon Panthers up 1-0 on the Christian Patriots. There's a stoppage of play here. Referee talking to somebody there. But if you're looking for a great place to advertise your business while reaching the greater San Diego community, then you want to advertise with TV. We have great rates for your business while giving you the opportunity to get your message out to a very important demographic. For more information, give us a call, 619-677-3246. Ball handled deep in their own zone. Number two, Anissa Patterson, sophomore defender for C Christian, corralling the ball, but Horizon manages to get it back, and now they're driving. And Kaloe again trying to make a run. That pass just a little too far for her. Pass by uh, number eight, Megan Hayes. Or Haynes. And it's going to be a goal kick for the Patriots. But the goalie's not going to take it here.
Seen some nice footwork out of number eight there. Yeah, she, she Megan makes Haynes, some. you see why she's a captain. She knows her way around the pitch. And she makes some nice cuts there. Good ball control, knows how to stop with it. Nice job of placement on her passes as well. Oh, the give and go almost didn't connect, but then connects to number 13, Catherine Day. And Day goes down. It's going to be a, a free kick here for Christian now, just outside the box. That was Jocelyn Amusi on the tackle there, just a little too aggressive for the referee's liking. So it's going to be a free kick opportunity right here for Christian and looking to get some work done, advance it deep into the zone here and maybe get an attempt on goal. There's the kick, bending it in. Nice placement there by Jamie Strauss. They weren't able to knock it in, but nice placed kick there on the free kick by Strauss. And here comes Kaloe again. Oh, what a move there. Aggressive tackle there, number two, Anissa Patterson. Sophomore not showing any fear, ready to stick her nose right in there. Wow. And good job to stop the run by Kaloe. Kaloe is such a player. She was taking on three Patriots there all by herself. Made another great run down the left side of the pitch. Whew. She is quite a player. That's about her fourth great run <laughs> of the day. And we're only 12 minutes into the game. And Heather, number 16, she's a sophomore forward. And she's got a sister on the team, number 20, Chloe. She's a senior midfielder, so a sister act here for Horizon High School, paying dividends early. Dangerous punch out by the Christian goaltender. She, it, she almost got caught because the Horizon player was able to take that ball and almost get another shot in. And if she would have, that would have been an open net. And then there's a call all the way Back on the other side of the field, Christian's going to retain possession of the ball. And yeah, they said, I think it was against Chloe. So it's a free kick for uh, Christian. Nice pass there by Christian. Christian working hard to advance the ball into the zone there, but that horizon defense is tough. They really know how to attack the ball and Regain control. All right, look out. Here comes Kaloe again. Trying to connect with number eight, Megan Hayes, or Haynes. And those long sprints, those are the type of plays where we see the sun take effect. I mean, already we can see uh, some of the players out there slowing down just a touch because that sun will just, it'll wear on you. It's a cumulative effect. Uh, yeah, and I think Horizon's really feeling it right now, even though they've, controlled the majority of this play so far here in the first 14 minutes of the game. Um, you know, fatigue is starting to, you can see the Horizon players are starting to get a little fatigued right now. 26 and a half left here in the first half. Horizon leading Christian by one in the Division Five Girls Soccer San Diego Section Championships. And taking time out for a substitution. Number 11, Courtney Case checking into the game for the Panthers. And they'll throw it in from the far sideline. Once again, Panthers in white going from right to left. The Christian Patriots in blue going the other way. And it's the Panthers who are going to get a free kick. So a free kick here for Horizon. Nice lift to the ball, and once again, the Christian goalkeeper has to punch it away. Nice job by Beezer to get up, get aggressive, and get a hand on that ball. And now Christian's starting to make a run of their own here. Here's the pass. 
for number four. For Christian, Courtney Marshall, just a little too far for her. And we see a confident goalkeeper there for Horizon, uh, Julia Degnan. She's a junior, and she's not afraid to go out and get that ball and attack it and you know, cut the attack off as soon as she can for the Patriots. She's, uh, she's pretty confident back there in her position. And she's very aggressive. Here's Kaloe again. I don't know how many times we've said her name and almost bends it in by herself. No help needed. Some beautiful loft on that shot. Oh, and that was probably just an inch or two. If she was probably an inch or two to the right, or I mean, excuse me, to the left, that ball would have went in. Yeah, really nice run there by Kaloe and Horizon continuing to put on the pressure here in the first half. Nice shot or not though, it's going to be a goal kick for Christian. And once again, Beezer is going to defer to her teammate on the kick. That's number two, Anissa Patterson in the backfield who's been taking those goal kicks. And there's Beezer punting it almost out to midfield. Ball controlled by the Patriots. Looking to move this battle onto the other side of the field as Horizon has controlled the action for the most part here in the first half so far. They've been pretty much on their side of the, on the Christian side of the field, doing what they want to do on offense. Yeah, done a great job so far. And once again, we're gonna have a toss in from the far sideline horizon, putting the ball into play. And horizon gets control of the ball, advancing it up the far sideline. Taking a shot, but blocked by the Patriot defender. And the Patriots are trying to bring the ball back out. There it is. And oh, nice pass there. That's a real good look and a nice run to go and retrieve it. That's number nine, Brooke Yarbor. Getting out there and trying to get something done for the Patriots. And she puts it on goal. Almost. Oh, wow. That was a heck of a chance for the Patriots there. Couldn't quite finish it off. Once again, good job by Degman to go out there and attack it. Looked like number four, Courtney Marshall. The junior midfielder for Christian, who was right there at the point of attack, looking to knock it in. But, you know, credit the goalkeeper, Julia Degnan, getting in there and putting her nose in it. And on that run, on that one, Brooke Yarborough, great run by Christian to set up that scoring opportunity. But you also have to give a lot of credit to number 11, Courtney Case, for pressuring Brooke Yarborough to make that uh, pass a little difficult. Once again, nice ball controlled by Horizon, but they give it up because they couldn't keep it inbounds. Christian ball. Ball thrown in by number 18, Hayden Mercurio. Here comes Yarbrough again, trying to track it down, and she couldn't. Pass by number 13, Catherine Day again. It's going to result in a goal kick for Horizon. Just about halfway done with the first half here for Matter Day High School. 21 minutes left on the clock. It's Horizon Panthers one, Christian Patriots nothing. And here's Julia Degnan getting ready for the goal kick, putting the ball back into play. Look for Catherine Day to be a, a big factor here because she has a lot of um, height. It uh, looks like a big height advantage here from the rest of the girls on the pitch. That was Mercurio again for Christian. Getting the ball down the sideline, trying to get it to her teammates, but good job by the Panther defense to smother the ball and knock it clear. It's going to be a throw in once again for the Patriots. Ball headed by number nine, Yarbor. Ooh. And a very aggressive defensive play there by Horizon. That's going to force a free kick here. For Christian. A 
I'll tell you, the, watching the boys and then the girls, the vastly different styles of play from from them. There it is. Uh, Offsides call offside. there. Yep. Christian getting a little frisky ahead of themselves. Have to give it up. Turnover possession, and Degnan's going to put it back into play now for the Panthers. Want to have your game broadcast live on the internet and be able to watch it again and again on demand while making money for your sports program? You want to give, you want to give your students the opportunity to create your own broadcast for your school's athletic events? Then contact us at info at kbcsports.com. We offer season packages for school, a full curriculum for your students, and an opportunity to raise up to $10,000 for your sports program. Again, that's info, KBS 19 Paused for an injury timeout there as a Christian player gets piggybacked off the field. I hope she's okay. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Guess who? Horizon trying to advance the ball, but not able to catch up to the deep shot into the zone. Oh, excuse me, that was that wasn't Yarbrough or Chloe. That uh, that was uh, that was Corey Ann Peterson. Number Corey six, Ann Peterson. I yeah, I was getting ahead of myself because uh, I just saw the the six number, not the sixteen. So now for Horizon, Megan Haynes getting back into the game. Oh. -ho! An interception by Horizon off of the free kick. And that was almost a goal. And more quality pressure being put on here by the Panthers. That was a... It's been a relentless attack here in the first half. I mean, even off of a free kick, Horizon's getting the ball. Nice decision there. That was uh, number four, Carlin Vandervet, knocking the ball back to her goalie, letting her kick it out into the zone and reset the play. Here's Haynes, or excuse me, that's number 20, Chloe Chloe. Advances the ball into the middle of the field, but Christian knocks it out. Haynes tries to save it for Horizon, but it goes out of bounds, and Christian's going to get the ball back on the throw-in. So one nothing here. Horizon leads. Just a little over halfway through the first half. Beautiful day here in sunny San Diego. Early March here, and the smell of suntan lotion is pungent in the air. <laughs> I assume that's a good thing. That means we're we're right around the corner from summer. It's better than snowstorms and tornadoes, isn't that right? Yeah, it is, it is. My favorite type of the year is spring and fall, if I had to choose one. Well, if your favorite time of the year is spring and fall, then you're in the wrong place because San Diego doesn't have much of either. It's pretty much oh, the I, same season year round around here. I'm in in San Diego. Does San Diego have a spring and fall? I thought it was just it was San Diego, just same thing year round. I mean, uh, I think I if think, you're a fan of the seasons, I would suggest moving east. I think I think San Diego has three types of seasons: sunny, well, nice sunny, hot sunny, and cloudy or rain. So I guess that'd be four, but but I don't think rain's a season. Rain rain fits into that cloudy thing, that cloudy season. Well, we whatever have. it is you're talking about, it's not today. It's a beautiful day today. Right. This is the nice sunny here. And thank goodness, because these girls are putting it all out there. Wouldn't want to have anything other than fantastic conditions, is, which is what we got, just what the doctor ordered. Horizon throwing in the ball once again here. 15 minutes left here in the first half. Panthers retain the lead. one nothing over the Patriots. And they are pressing just past midfield, looking to get something done 
and keep the pressure on this Christian Patriots defense. Yeah. I mean, even in the open space, even with the open balls, Horizon seems always to be getting to those. But nice pass there by Christian, connecting with number 13, Catherine Day. And Day jockeying for position with Jaslyn Amusi there. Ball knocked out of bounds. Christian is going to retain possession. Oh, you, you thought, because it was a throw-in. But <laughs> once again, Horizon comes up with the steal. And here's Horizon once again trying to pick and choose their spots. Ball's advanced. Tried to get it to Haynes, but pass was broken up by the Patriots. Anissa Patterson came in there for the header. Didn't quite time it correctly, so ball goes back to Beezer, the goalkeeper, who clears it out. And that was number three, Brooke Downey clearing the ball, trying to get it out of the zone, but Horizon once again doing a good job to clog up those lanes and keep the ball on the Christian side of the field. Ooh, big collision there, but ball ends up in the possession of the Patriots. Now Horizon gets it back, backing it out, looking to make a pass, and Haynes, number eight, not able to reel it in, so the Patriots going to throw it in once again. I think the Horizon here is going to make a substitute. we got two players standing on the side. So, Joe, do you have any personal soccer experience? Um, yeah, I used to play soccer when I was a youth. Oh, yeah, and how would you describe your type of game? Um, well, I wasn't the fastest, so I was always a defender. <laughs> and so when the ball would come to me, I would kick it away. <laughs> no logic to it. I was just, oh, the ball comes to me, I'll kick it away. You're not making I, any fans of defenders out there in the crowd today. Well, Basically, you're calling defenders slow, and you, they don't need any logic. Uh, you got to remember, I was, I was very young at this time, so... The coach just told me, when the ball comes to you, kick it away. Well, I'm, you know, sell it, you know. Here yeah, we are yeah, a couple yeah. years later. I mean, maybe you had some strategy. I, you know, well, I don't, I, I think if I were to play now, I would have more strategy to it. But that's why I'm up here in the box, and that's why we're letting the good people do it down there. Well, that and they're still in high school, correct? You're correct, too, yeah. Now Christian looking to make another push into Horizon territory, but that Horizon defense is just suffocating him, not really letting him get any sort of continuity in terms of passing the ball in the offensive zone. Yeah, I wasn't much of an athlete growing up. I was the only player ever to strike out in a t-ball game. Well, I think acceptance is the is the first step to any sort of recovery. So, right. Joe, we're all proud of you, and we're rooting for you. Thank you. I found my calling up here. Now, Christian got the ball back there in the offensive zone, looking to get it done. But number four, Courtney Marshall, her pass goes into space, and it's intercepted by Horizon, who's now attacking. Megan Haynes trying to advance the ball. Passes it to her teammate. That's number nine, Eden Dene. She had the successful cross earlier that led to the score. Not able to get it done there, but it remains one nothing here, 11 minutes in the first half. Yeah, just a little too far out for Brooke McDoyle there, who was trying to, who, who she was trying to connect with on the pass. Ball gets kicked out of bounds, and Horizon's going to get the throw in. Today's game is being brought to you by the San Diego Hall of Champions. The Hall of Champions, located in Balboa Park, is the nation's largest multi-sports museum with three levels of memorabilia and 68,000 square feet of space. It's also a great place to host your next big event. For more information, visit the Hall of Champions 
online at sdhoc.com. That's all caps, sdhoc.com. couple substitutions during that last break. Number two, Mackenzie Fagan back in for Horizon. Number seven, Alyssa Walker. And number 16, Heather Kaloe, the lone goal scorer here early on in the game. So uh, on a day like this, we've talked about the weather a couple times. It's important to rotate those players in. It's a, it's an advantage that you have on the high school level. You can cycle these players in rather than, you know, one substitution and you're done. So Horizon doing a good job of cycling through that roster, trying to keep their girls fresh. And I really like that too because – uh, for a couple reasons. One is you're giving multiple uh, students a chance to be out on a field and playing a championship game like this. And the other thing is it, it's preventing injuries, you're pre preventing the fatigue. Nice cross there. Horizon has the ball again, making another run. But nice defensive play by number 14, Eva Marino for a Christian. Possession going to be retained by Horizon as they get the throw in. That was uh, number three, Noel Nordigan, on the throw in. Ball gets knocked around and it's going to go back again one more time to Horizon. Megan, Megan Haynes, the senior captain, going to inbound the ball. See if she can find her teammate. Here's Chloe. Heather trying to cross it again. Nice block there by number 17. And that's going to result Lynch. in a, that's a corner kick now for Horizon. So need to see the Christian defense here beef it up a little bit and clog up these lanes, not allow any dribblers to sneak through. I'm a, extremely impressed with Chloe right now, Heather Chloe, and she's only a sophomore. Horizon is this good right now. What are they going to be like next year and in two years? Check that. I called a corner kick. They called it a throw-in right there, just in that same area there. Nice cross and a shot there by number eight, Megan Hayes again, or Haynes. Allie Beezer, though, elevating doing a good job of using her hands to corral that ball and stop it. Yeah, and if she decided not to, there was a Horizon player in the corner of the goal willing to tap it in if that ball didn't go in by itself from the great cross. Now Christian managed to get the ball down the field a ways and they're gonna throw it in. And once again, we see the Beautiful flip pass completed. That looked like number nine, Brooke Yarbor, who pulled it off. Pretty acrobatic move. I like that throw in. Yeah, I don't know how effective those flip throws are, but man, do they look great. Well, they look real pretty. She <laughs> seems to get some pretty good momentum on it. I mean, throws it in good ways. I mean, you're right, doesn't really, didn't really lead to anything that time, but hey, if it works for her, keep doing it. But you see multiple, even on the professional level, the, they'll do it too. And I'm not sure how effective it is, but, man, it looks exciting. Didn't see any of the guys doing that. Oh, and we have a hurt player here on the far side. She was making a nice run here. I can't make out the number. It's just that far away. But I believe it's number 16, Heather Chloe who came up a little limping, but looks like she's going to walk it off and stay in the game and take this free kick. Crossed by Kaloe and number two for Christian gets in front of that. And that was Patterson getting in front of that. I almost said Chloe was just rubbing some dirt on it and walking it off, but, you know, these days they don't even play on dirt, these kids these days. They play on artificial turf. Right. So, so you can't really rub artificial turf on it, no, can you? No, but she must have taken some of those black rubbers that they have underneath the artificial turf and maybe rub some black rubber on it to rub it off. Not exactly the holistic approach I think that God intended, but, hey, whatever works, right? Whatever gets yeah. you back in the game. Maybe we should start a new phrase. Just rub some rubber on it and rub it off or 
<laughs> whatever you want to call. Maybe maybe the words rubber is too many in there. And I believe that's what's underneath the, the field, right? It's like black rubber-ish. You're correct. Yeah. It, as far as I know, it's a bunch of chopped up old tires. Yeah, that's what I heard too. So. And then they charge you $100,000 for it. Yeah. I also heard too, I, I also heard somewhere that once they put artificial turf in the field on a landscape, if they ever wanted to remove the artificial turf, it would take a number of years and able to grow something back on the soil. That makes sense, but you know, the beauty of this field is, I mean, it it looks almost as good as the day it, it, they put it in. I mean, it's exactly. absolutely beautiful here, and I, I'm not sure if you can get the total effect on screen that we get here, but this is just, this is an amazing facility, and I think all these kids are lucky to be able to participate in events here because it's just such a great facility. And, and think of all, the water we're conserving now by these fields, the fact that they're not using up all that water to uh, keep keep the grass growing. So I think it works for everybody. Certainly important issue here in Southern California in this day and age, conserving water. So not only are these kids achieving athletically, but they're also performing their civic duty. Right, exactly. Or performing their civic duty on a civic duty field. Anyway, back to the game. Christian now with the ball. Uh, it's going to be out of bounds. So Horizon will get the ball and make a substitution here. Coming on the field is number 11, Courtney Case. And coming off for Horizon is number 6, Carol Corey Ann Patterson. And that was number three, Noel Nordgren, throwing the ball in, but it's knocked out of the zone by the Patriots. Back to Horizon, though, gaining control at midfield. And once again, out of bounds. Ball to Horizon on the throw-in. Nice job by number nine, Brooke Yarbor, to knock it loose, not let Horizon get an easy throw in there. And ball's going to go back to Christian. Yarbor's going to have the throw-in. Header there, back to Yarborough, and then kicked out of bounds by Horizon. Referee gives the signal as Christian's about to throw back in, number seven, Nikki Waymeyer. She's also a senior captain. She's a midfielder for the Patriots. Game slowed down here a little bit, but here comes... Guess who, number 16, Heather Kaloe, making another great run. And play was stopped now for some reason. And I thought it was away from the ball because that, that whistle came really late. Uh, they, they stopped the, the play, and they're going to give the ball to Christian about at the 38. But They're saying Chloe pushed off to gain control of that ball. And, you know, here we are inside of two minutes left here in the first half. Christian. That With whistle came really late because she was already about at the 15-yard line before they made the uh, called the play dead. Number four, Courtney Marshall making a nice run up the far sideline, trying to get a shot on goal, but it goes wide, doesn't really get a, get a chance for the goalkeeper, Julia Degnan, for Horizon to get a hand on it. Today's game is being brought to you by Susan Cooper Photography, the official photographer for the CIF San Diego section. Susan Cooper for Photography provides quality team and action photos and can also provide trophies, fundraising options, all in one package. To have them come out to your next event, contact Susan Cooper Photography, 619-501-7128, or visit them online, susancooperphotography.com. During that last stoppage of play, number 17, Danielle Rostelli coming in for Horizon, replacing Captain Megan Haynes. So one nothing here, Horizon. We're just in the last two minutes of the first half. Big collision there at midfield. 
Horizon retaining possession. Here comes Kaloe then, and being double teamed and then taken down hard by number nine. That's Yarborough, and she's gonna get booked. That's a yellow card for Yarbor. And it was a tough takedown, but didn't look like there was any malice on it. I mean, it, it was a tough run. She she dug at the ball, and you know, a player ended up on her back. Sometimes yeah. it happens in sports. I, I think I think the referee booked her because it was a, a takedown from behind. So I, you know, Yarbrough didn't see it coming. Um, so I think that's what the official called there. And now Kaloe's going to end up getting a free kick in the last two minutes. And I I think this will probably be the the last opportunity for each team here. Free kick's gonna come about 100 feet from the goal. Um, I don't know why, I wish I could give it to you in meters because we're playing soccer and it just sounds cooler when you give it in meters, but right. I don't have that knowledge. So 100 feet just about here for Kaloe with the free kick. Christian's gonna set up a three women wall in front of Kaloe. Here's the kick, bending in, right above the crossbar or the field goal post. If we were playing American football, that would have been three points. Yeah, but it would have been a penalty for offsides because <laughs> some of the players were on the long, wrong line of scrimmage. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. you know, I mean, I, I get what you're saying there, but it's faulty logic. Right. Nice try, though, Joe. Well, I appreciate thanks. your effort. You know, I'm just trying to up the scoring here in the, here in the soccer match. But it's still one nothing Horizon. You know, that's a common mistake, though, made by Americans. I mean, you don't really need to up the scoring. Soccer, it is what it is. Um, you don't need a lot of points to have an exciting game. You just need to have an exciting game to have an exciting game. And that's why we call it the beautiful game here. And we have a beautiful game going on with beautiful soccer teams. And it's a beautiful day here in San Diego. And it's one nothing Horizon. And that's the end of the first half. So we're going to take a break, and you can take a break with us. And uh, you're listening to uh, CIFSanDiego.tv. Three sixteen left to go in this ball game. High formation, third and three from the 45 of the Wolverines. And this time, holy cow! Dion almost hands it to the Westview player. He's gonna run us to the five, 10, touchdown, Wolverines! How did that happen? Jason that was Snyder. Holy cow! He was in the backfield before the running back could even get the handoff. He took the handoff from He Dion. took the ball right out of Dion's hands and just <laughs> Holy cow! Can't say I've seen that one very often. Snyder comes shooting in from the A-gap. I think Dion froze when he saw him. He's ready to hand off to his running back. He froze when he saw him and just hand, let him have the ball. 12 seconds to go. Oh, you could hear a pin drop. Five, four, three, two, get the snap off. Last play of the game. Brewster rolls right, gets away from two sacks. Dons win, sack at the 20-yard line. What a game. And number 40, Lucas Zinder with the game-saving sack. And there is heartbreak on one sideline and a jubilation on another. Offset eye for the Grizzlies as Keeney takes it under center. They'll send a man in motion, pitch back to Bird on the sweep. Bird finds a seam. He might go, folks. 20, 15, 10. Drags a tackler. Touchdown! Bird goes 38 yards for the touchdown on the sweep. One more snap is all it's going to take, and there you have it, folks. Your 2011 Division I Sack Joaquin section champions, the Granite Bay Grizzlies, as they defeat Pleasant Grove 30-24. to Jacqueline Williamson. Her serve is over. Dug by Holt. Giblin going back to Holt near side, cut shot, kept alive, back in one by Cathedral, and this one is out! 
as Castanon Hill sends it wide, and the Cathedral Dons have won the title 16-14 in game five. Thomas with the ball, swings it out to Norris. Cameron Taylor tried to block that one away. Norris with a strong take, blocked by B.J. Anya. Huge block, Robinson leading the break the other way, gets it to Grant, oh. slam dunk Jeremy Grant off the feed from James Robinson. What a play by the stack. Hancock to his immediate left. Two receivers far side, one near side. Hancock on a counter, right side. He's inside the 10. He bounces off a tackler at the 10, the five. Touchdown, Helix. And behind Hancock, the field is littered with white jerseys on the turf. Wow. Hancock not to be outdone by his fellow uh, <laughs> playmakers on offense. Put on a show on that short 12-yard touchdown run. Looked like he was down after three yards. Just threw a defender on the ground. As sophomore Chris Carter sets under center. In their tight wing formation, Lycos in motion. Second back through is Freeman. Freeman just knocking people over. Look at him run. Breaks through. Four tackles. And now it's just a foot race to the end zone. And Freeman's going to go the distance. Touchdown, Imperial, on the first play of the second half. Second and six for Imperial from their own 47. They're going to give it to Freeman again off the right, left side. And Freeman gets by one wave and down across the 20, 40 yard line. Still on his feet. Look at him run down to the 20 yard line. One man to beat. Gets by him. Touchdown, Freeman. How did he do that? Holy cow. 64 yard touchdown run. His fifth of the game. Royce Freeman, ladies and gentlemen, you're about to see the top rushing and the <laughs> as I look over to our partners of KXO Radio, the top rusher wow. in the San Diego section for the next two years. That's just amazing. That is just amazing. They hit him in the backfield. They hit him at the line of scrimmage. They hit him a couple yards downfield. They hit him again near no the goal line. No five second count can be started. Nobody was close enough defensively. Lyle's going to swing left side. Robinson. Here is a backdoor lob. There for Grant. They've been wanting that all game. And they got it. 50-42. They lulled you to sleep. And then they hit Grant on the back door. They trail by two. McMorrow's kick is on the way. And it is good. good. St. Augustine has their first lead of the game. 21 to 20 with 25 seconds to play the senior McMorrow with a huge kick not the longest of his career but the biggest of his career oh, St. Augustine leads it 21 to already 20. lining up they won't even have to run that one more play they just act yeah, yes why bother so there you have it your five-time defending division three champions the Cathedral Catholic Dons Running up over and through Olympian 41 to nothing here from Qualcomm Stadium. Patriots down 21 17. Great ball game here. Dylan taking it, looking right, throwing it up top to Gaines. It will be caught by Gaines. Oh my goodness. It looked like the defender had it, but Gaines stole it away from him. Jason Gaines, are you kidding me, my friend? Oh boy. It looked like for sure we had an interception by the Tories, but as they both were going to the ground, Jason Gaines just wrestled it away from him. Shane Dillon to Jason Gaines on an 11-yard play. Fanchin in the game, now out, replaced by Hayashi, the libero for defense. Wenzel serve, championship point, ball up in the air. Hayashi's going to bring it back. Richards, deep one over and three. Free opportunity. Look for Wallace. No, they go Becker. Hayashi then tap over in two by Hollingsworth. Now look for Wallace for the match. <laughs> Kathleen Wallace. No better way for the Bulls to finish it than giving it to their senior leader. 25-12, 25-15, and with eight straight points to close out their third straight D5 championship on a kill by Kathleen Wallace, 25-21 in game three. Branson has won the D5 title. To the backfield, it's Hernandez and Northcutt. Set to throw is Thomas, has time, goes for the home run. It's intercepted in the end zone. 
seemed like it, they tried to go to Martin, and Martin slipped. Stockton, Hillmore, and Escalon. That's going to do it, folks. Victory formation taken. Neil, the clock comes out. The clock will tick down the players jumping up at midfield. I think I see a, a Gatorade. Did we have a Gatorade shower? Uh, we most certainly did. Casey Taylor getting the shower there. Very much deserved. Down to 12. Great tackle there by Ronald Williams there to make the stop for Helix. And the Helix fans are starting to celebrate here. This is going to be the final play. Five seconds. Pow Pow will hand it off. And they're going to get in the end zone touchdown. That's Keegan who gets in, but that's going to be the end of the ball game. 44 to 6 will be the score. So Oceanside scores on the final play of the ball game. And gets a consolation prize just to, to make this is kind of say that, hey, we didn't get shut out. So 44 to 6 is your score. And Helix is celebrating on the sideline. Oceanside streak of seven straight championship games has been ended. Two minutes and five seconds left on the clock. Clock rolling. Third down and 15 for the Patriots. Dylan, he's got time. Steps up. He's going to chuck it deep. He's got a man open. Seth Collins with a diving catch. He hauls it in at the 25. Oh, my goodness. I'll tell you right there. Dylan goes to show why he is a Division I prospect as he's able to step up, elude the pressure, see Collins down the field, and make the connection. As I'll tell you right now, there has not been a bigger catch for Seth Collins this entire season. Fans nervously wait on the far side. Trips right. Vernon, the lone receiver to the left. Troy Zine rolls right. Here we go. And he's going to be... Oh, he gets away, but can't get away from the second slew. Vacaville takes over on downs, and the crowd erupts. So does the... And welcome back to CIF San Diego TV section of the de, or, uh, of our presentation of the CIF championships here at Modern Day High School. Today we're uh, right now we're broadcasting the Division Five Girls Soccer Championship between Horizon Panthers and the Christian Patriots. First half complete. Horizon leads one nothing. Tom, what did you see that you liked uh, for the first half for both teams? Well, uh, number one, I liked the goal that Horizon scored because that put them up one to nothing, which is where we currently stand. Uh, it was a nice run up the sideline. Uh, pass was delivered, and the ball was put in the net uh, by Eden Dene. Uh, pass was given out by Heather Kalei, Kaloe, who we uh, he, we called her name a bunch there in the first half. Um, you know, she did a good job of forcing the action, so I really like what Horizon's been doing on offense. Uh, and as for Christian, uh, I know they gave up that one goal, but really, honestly, I got to give it up for their defense because they had a lot of pressure put on them in that first half. They really could have given up more than they did. And, uh, you know, I, I think one nothing. they're happy with where they stand probably. Uh, because really all it takes is one play right now to even the score. Exactly, and, and you got to remember, too, that that first goal was scored in the first five minutes of the game, so Christian did a great job defensively try, trying to shut down the Horizon offense, which we've seen is really powerful when you got players like Heather Kaloe making a lot of runs so far. I think I counted at least six or seven. And there she is again, and she just runs over a player. Big time collision. That was number two, Anissa Patterson for Christian, who just absolutely got trucked by Kaloe. And it didn't look like anything intentional, just one of those collisions on the pitch that you see happen. And uh, it doesn't look good right now for Patterson. She is down and 
hurting. So yeah. injury timeout, and her teammates are obviously concerned. I mean, I mean Kaloe was running full speed. She 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 passed the ball almost to like her herself ahead of herself, trying to out sprint the player, and uh, she just ran right over the Christian player. And we're gonna we're gonna definitely gonna have an injury timeout here. If you guys are liking the the coverage we're we're broadcasting today, next week the best soccer teams in California will gather at Downey High School on March 9th and 10th for the Southern Regional Soccer Championships. And KBCSports.com will be there. We'll have live audio coverage of the soccer championships in the southern half of the state. Boys and girls teams in Division One through Three battle it out for the crown. You can catch all the action on kbcsports.com, your home for high school sports. And as we look back to the field, uh, is an encouraging sign to see uh, Anissa Patterson, the sophomore defender, get up. Uh, she's being piggybacked off the field by one of the, the Christian staff members, but you know, they wouldn't have got her up to her feet if they didn't think she was okay to do that. So that's a that's good sign number one for Patterson. But uh, over uh, overall, not a great break for Christian because Patterson was right in the mix. We talked about the strength of the first half being their defense, and Patterson was a key player in that. Yeah, and, and it was good she got up under her own power. I mean, she's being carried off by a trainer there, but uh, it was good to see her get off under her own power. So luckily... Hopefully she'll be okay and she'll be able to come back in the game. Uh, throw in by Christian, but uh, Horizon was able to knock the ball back into the backfield, try and retain possession, but Christian gets the ball. Now they're advancing it up the far sideline, and there's a cross. Oof. Boy, almost could have gone into the goal there. I mean... I don't know if she was necessarily aiming to put it in the goal. She was just trying to cross and make an opportunity. Uh, none of her teammates were able to swoop in and take advantage, but the cross itself was pretty close. That was a great run by Catherine Day, number 13. And that, that cross in itself, like you were saying, that almost went in the goal by itself. She had no help from uh, her teammates there colliding on the ball. What a great run by Catherine Day, though. Probably the most passive we've seen, Julia Degnan, all day. She's the goalkeeper uh, all the way backing up the defense for Horizon there. So uh, she really just kind of let the ball come to her at that, that time, whereas in the first half we saw her step up and knock it knock it free a few times. Yeah, and, and, and you know, back to that cross too by Catherine Day. I mean, you just got to give it up for, the, for these soccer balls they're making because not only are they – that more advanced they're also the spin they're able to get on these soccer balls nowadays is really uh, amazing because that looked like a nothing cross and then it almost went in and that's why it might have caught the horizon goaltender off guard because she didn't think that was going to go in when that ball sailed over her head now we get a lot of players bunched up on that far sideline. Here comes Day again. Although the pass was a little too far out in front of her, and she makes the save to keep it inbounds, but she had to kick it away, and it goes out of bounds for a Horizon goal kick. So Julia Degnan, the goalkeeper for Horizon, Sets the ball, and she's about to put it back into play for the Panthers. Ball bounces, and it's a loose ball now. Christian looking to retain possession, but it goes out of bounds, and the Panthers are going to be able to advance it on the throw-in. And once again, it goes out of bounds. And so now it's going to be a throw-in again for Horizon. We're seeing a lot of battles here in the first part of this second half. Right, right at the middle of the field, no, no team has been able to get a good possession in the box yet, but they are sure fighting tooth and nail in the open field. Here's Day again. An effective cross. And nice job by the Horizon defense to kick the ball out of the back 
It's going to create a corner kick opportunity for Christian, but the number one goal was to stop the momentum there of the Patriots' attack, and that's what Horizon did. Yeah, and that was a real, real nice cross by day to number five, Ashley Lyon. And Lyon was able to make a nice pass and almost connected with Peterson. But Horizon defender was right there to get it out of bounds. And now it's a Christian high corner kick. Christian putting it into play. Ball is knocked back and out of the zone by the Panthers. Courtney Marshall, number four, they're tracking it down, trying to knock it back down into the zone, but ball goes out of bounds on the far sideline and the Patriots are going to retain possession. Ball will be thrown in by number five, Ashley Lyon, senior midfielder, looking to connect with one of her teammates here and get some work done. There's the flip pass again. Man, that's pretty. <laughs> I really like that. Mackenzie Fagan there, heading the ball for the Patriots, managing to keep it in play for the offense. And once again, it's gonna be a toss in for the Patriots. So nice job here in the early goings of the second half. Christian trying to put some pressure on that Horizon defense and create some opportunities for themselves to tie this one up. Run being made there, that was number 13, Catherine Day once again. You mentioned her name before and there she is again forcing the action. She strikes the ball, it's blocked by a defender but it is going to bring up another corner opportunity for the Panthers so we'll have to see what kind of lift they can get on this kick. See if they can create an opening and see if they can knock this ball in. Catherine Day, I mean, she's really been uh, a constant force here in the first part of this second half. An interesting strategy there. You know, a lot of times on the corners you'll see them lofted up and, and, you know, put the ball up for grabs there. It was just a flat on the ground type of kick, sort of a pass to a teammate who was hopefully going to initiate some offense, but Horizon able to thwart the attack. Here's a long kick. Saved by the goaltender for Horizon. That was Courtney Marshall who tried to play the ball onto the goal. Stopped once again by Julia Degnan. Oh, what a nice run there by Horizon. Oh! And a nice save. Ali Breezer stepped out, tried to be aggressive with the ball, almost bit her, but her teammate had her back, was able to stop it. Looked like Donis there to Yarborough. Donis, or Danaeus, Eden Danaeus, connecting on the pass, and Yarborough almost had a wide open net. She tried to uh, kick it over the goaltender and almost had a goal herself. Ooh, opportunity there. Once again, that was Heather Kaloe who she had a, a lot of open space there. Looked like she could have dribble drived to the hole, but instead she decided to take the shot where she had it. Good stop by Allie Breezer. It was a loose rebound and it was a scramble for the ball, but uh, Horizon not able to capitalize there. Christian doing a good job to knock it out of bounds and Horizon's gonna reset their offense. Yeah, Kaloe again. I mean, she is quite an offensive player. Ball is backed out to the point, trying to start this offense up. But Christian does a good job of clearing the zone and it's gonna go into the backfield for Horizon and they're gonna have the throw in. Throw in by number nine, Jocelyn Amusi here. She throws it straight up the sideline to Kaloe, who taps it to her teammate. Tries to perform the give and go, but good cutoff there by number two, Anissa Patterson, who's back in the game. Good to see her rejoining the action. Yeah, and I think Anissa Patterson <laughs> there decided the best way to stop Kaloe and her speed is to <laughs> just get in front of her. And that's all she did there. 
back into the game for Horizon. Number two, Mackenzie Fagan. She's a senior captain, midfielder. She replaces number 13, Deborah Lightcamp, Lightcap, junior midfielder. So one nothing here in the second half of the Division Five Women's CIF Championship. Just uh, a little over 10 minutes into the second half. Coming into the game, Horizon entering with a 17-4-3 record on the year. They were the number one seed in this Division V bracket. Christian Patriots at 12-9-2 were the second seed, so both these teams got a bye in the first round. Christian had to go through the San Diego Jewish Academy, who they beat 5-1, and then they beat River Valley, a tough River Valley team who had a good year at 17-5-2. They beat River Valley 2-0 to advance to... The finals here at Matter Day High School. Horizon had to go through the Rock Academy, and then they had to go on and beat Pacific Ridge. They beat Pacific Ridge 3 0 to advance to this game here today, and it's just been a flurry of action for the last week here. The first round of these playoffs were on February 22nd, and here we are on March 3rd, wrapping up the sectionals. So, a lot of action in these last couple days for these girls. And for some of these girls, this is their last, these are their last high school soccer games. So, you know, it's a, a lot of emotion too probably on the field for these girls at, at, after after the match is over. No doubt about it. Always want to go out with a win anytime you leave, much less when you're leaving the pitch for the last time ever. Oh, a mistake there by Christian, and it almost cost them. And the goaltender had to come out and make the save because Heather Kaloe was right there again. Nice job, that was Allie Breezer, the goalkeeper for Christian who smothered the ball. She's been a, she's been a solid goalkeeper today here for the Patriots. Had that one mishap early on in the game but has been solid aside from that. Yeah, and I, I don't think that really was a a mishap either that that was just a great play by the horizon so Christian high ball now gonna throw it in to two horizon players who had it out of bounds so now Christian will get another throw in just a little bit closer to the horizon goal Courtney Marshall tried to play the throw in, but she got sandwiched by two Horizon defenders. Doesn't matter though, as they retain possession and they look to continue to put the pressure here on the offensive end. They really need to get something done. It being a one nothing game at this point, the Panthers in the lead. Christian certainly wants to at least get some shots on goal and put themselves in a position to get a goal. Very, very tight game, and our last game here at Modern Day was tight too as well. It was one nothing uh, throughout the majority of the game, and then with 6.30 left to go, the Saints were able to uh, knot it up and stretch it into overtime. Interesting. That went into a shootout. Yeah, you bring that up. It, you actually bring up a good point because, you know, the St. Saint Augies, they didn't have many opportunities before that final goal, they just, you know, they didn't get that many shots on goal throughout the game, and then all of a sudden, they struck at the very end. So we s sort of see a similar situation here. Horizon's been kind of dominating the, the action so far, but Christian is sort of laying in wait if they can get some, some good chances here towards the end. All they really need is one successful opportunity to knot this thing up. Yep. And, and, and they have to keep Horizon off the board, too. And I think that's going to be, I think what's critical is stopping number 16, Heather Kaloe, from even making those runs. She's already had probably a couple dozen great runs, scoring chan chances that she's made into a scoring chance uh, this game. And Christian backs it up to the defense. They're looking to... Just dump it into the zone, see if they can get something going. Offsides called against Christian. It's going to be a free kick for Horizon. Horizon getting it back, looking to 
Looking to advance this ball. The free kick is going to be taken by the Panthers. Ball is knocked to about midfield where Christian looking to make some passes and make some movement here in the offensive zone. Horizon gets the ball. Here comes Kaloe again, making a great run. Stops, slows it down, waits for some teammates. Ooh. What a what a move. Wow. What a move did she make on Patterson there? Kicked it right in between her legs. Almost got the ball. But number three, Brooke Downey there was was there to That was a little kick shake and bake. She even might she might have nutmegged her there at the end. Yeah. Uh didn't quite get a chance to finish it off, but and now Chloe looks like she's coming off the field as she's she's hobbling. So yeah. uh, that could be a that could be a big development here for Horizon. Christian right. wants to take advantage of this opportunity. I mean, she definitely she definitely did a little shake and bake on on on, on one one girl, um, but couldn't <laughs> evade two defenders there. So nice job by Christian uh, in their defense, clamping down on on Chloe like that. And ball is kicked outside the back of the field of play. So Horizon going to get the goal kick. Once again, Julia Degnan going to get to line it up and take a free swing at it. KBCSports.com and Play On Sports Network showcases great high school games every week. And now you can access our content using multiple platforms. Follow us on Facebook. Get the latest KBC and play on news on Twitter or catch the highlights in high definition. So Christian now with the ball. Goes off of a Horizon defender. Nice block there by Chloe Chloe. Doing a good job of breaking up that pass and Stopping the momentum of, of the Patriots. They were trying to start there. Advantage given to Horizon there as number 20 for Horizon. Chloe, Chloe. Save that five times fast. Uh, goes up for the ball, gains the advantage. Here's Chloe surveying the field, going right to left. Passes it to her teammate who's going up the sideline. That was Corey Ann Peterson trying to center the ball, but good defense. That was number 17, Coralyn Lynch for Christian, applying some pressure and you know, not really letting Peterson get anything done. Yeah, and Peterson tried to cross there, and uh, Lynch right there to block the the cross pass, or else that could have spelled danger for Christian again. 21 minutes left here in the second half at Matter Day High School. Horizon Panthers leading the Christian Patriots by a score of one to nothing. Here comes Day. Day with a nice pass, and now number six. That was. Hinge couldn't keep up with it. Ooh, some big collisions out there, and that one didn't look good. Yeah. There were about three consecutive collisions there, and then that last one finally drew some attention from the referees. Yeah, Dave just ran over a Horizon player, and that Horizon player almost fell onto one of her teammates. So it's going to be a free kick for Horizon. I'm not sure she was she booked there too. I saw the official there with his uh, notebook out, so I'm not sure she was booked or not. I didn't see a card go up. Balls at midfield. Christian looking to continue pushing forward, but things are starting to get a little chippy out there as players are going down. Nice job to knock the ball out of bounds. Number 18, Hayden Mercurio. We're going to get some substitutions here for Horizon. 
during the stoppage of play. Need a highlight video for your athlete working to earn that four-year scholarship? Then you want to contact kbcsports.com. We provide a recruiting video for any athlete in any sport. Not only that, but we give you your own recruiting page right on our website. For more information, contact us at recruits at kbcsports.com or 619-677-3246. And that was number 10, Brooklyn McDowell, and number 13, Deborah Lightcap, who both entered the game for the Panthers. Once again, keeping fresh such an important part of a, a game on a day like this. The stakes are high, number one, but number two, that sun is bearing down on all these players out here, and not only the players, but also the spectators. And there it is, a quick kick by Christian. It's up to number five, five I believe, and that's Ashley Lyon, and Lyon tries to bend it in to the box, but nice save by the Horizon goalkeeper again. She's aggressive. Christian once again trying to back up that defense and prevent Horizon from making those runs. And again, we see a player down on the ground. We've seen some hard hitting action here in the yeah. second half. This is definitely getting chippy out here and the girls are definitely uh, going for each and every ball regardless of if an opposing player is there or not. So we're gonna get another substitution here. Number 17 is gonna come into the game for Horizon. That's Jasmine o -Oms o Omsi? Omisi? You know, I'm not sure how to say that name. And then on the Christian sideline, number eight, Jamie Strauss, junior midfielder, enters the game as well. Ball is centered. Oh! Ooh, manhandling that. Goalkeeper, she's way outside of the zone, but doesn't end up hurting Christian. But okay. she was really aggressive in going out and getting that ball and looked like she got kind of pushed to the ground and the goal was just sitting wide open. Yeah, almost cost her two and nice awareness by Horizon to get a pass off, but that just pass just sailed over the goal completely. But there was a wide open net here and now we have another player down. And while we get this stoppage in um, play, catch the best San Diego section soccer on CIF San Diego TV. You can watch a replay of today's games after each one concludes. Plus, check out the game highlights, player player of the game interviews, and more. Order a DVD or Blu-ray disc of the game, and because we're your home for soccer in San Diego, CIFSanDiego.tv. And that's a Horizon player down on the field right now. Can't identify her number, but uh, indicative of the action we've seen here in the second half. Lots of collisions and just emotions running high. There's a lot on the line right now. Yeah. KBCSports.com and play on sports showcases great high school games every week and now you can access our content using multiple platforms follow us on facebook get the latest kbc news and play on news on twitter or catch the highlights in high definition on youtube all of our content can now link to your favorite social media site share all the high school action you see every week brought to you by your home for high school sports kbcsports.com and play on sports So she's still down on the ground, the player. And uh, and now we see the Patriots retreating to their sideline to maybe grab a little water and you know give this a little bit of time, see what the trainers have to say about the injured Panther. We get the trainers. Some additional training staff coming out to assess the situation.
So, Joe, so far, how do you rate your experience here at the San Diego sectional finals for soccer in 2012? Well, you know, I've been l lucky. I've done two back-to-back -back games, and both of them have been great contests so far. I mean, uh, I have the last game, Saints versus uh, uh, Cathedral, went into a, a kicks from the mark shootout, and boy, was that exciting! And now we're in a, a close battle here in the the championship game. Seventeen minutes left to go here in the game. And uh, we got a one nothing game, so it's really anybody's game. So quite a, it's really quite exciting. And I, I think I think the girls and the boys, both teams, have played tremendous contests so far, and I think uh, everybody's doing a great job. And what a great venue here at Modern Day! So thank you so much for hosting us. And if you are enjoying the action today, uh, we also got games at Sierra, Sierra High School. We got some other uh, soccer championship games going on in the San Diego section, as well as some basketball games uh, tonight in the San Diego section, as well as games from all over the state. We got over, I believe, close to 100 games being broadcast today, well, between last night and Sunday. So we got we got a lot of events coming on, uh, going on right now. So uh, if you guys like high school sports, you guys came to the right place to watch or listen to your favorite high school sports team vie for a championship. And it looked like the player that was – Getting help off the field there was number 20, Chloe Kaloe. That's too bad. She's a senior. Not a great way to to end your career as a soccer player is you know, getting taken off the field like that. It's very ginger, and it looks like you know, maybe, a, maybe a right field. And the clock's running. There's 17 minutes left. But uh, the good news is her, her sister came on in her place, so... Heather, who we did see go down earlier uh, in this game as well, is, is now back on the field, and she has the ball, and she makes a beautiful cross again, and the Christian High goaltender, that is... Uh, uh, That's Allie Breezer. Allie Breezer comes out and makes a, a save. But what a cross again by Kaloe. Christian doing a good job of getting the ball, just keeping it. You know, in the middle of the field or on their own side of the field, they're, they're not letting Christian really develop any sort of offense. Closing in on 15 minutes here left in the contest, and uh, the Patriots have to be thinking about what can they possibly do in order to advance this ball because we just haven't seen that many quality scoring opportunities from the Patriots today. Yeah, they got to press soon here. Ball advanced up the right sideline. Knocked out of bounds. It's going to be called Horizon Ball. She must have stepped out of bounds on her way up the sideline as the referee signals for Panther possession. Yep. And then it goes right back to Christian. So now they're going to have an opportunity to throw in. Throws it in right up along the sideline. Ball is pursued. Tried to center it, but not able to actually get it past the Horizon defender. Good job to use her body and block that ball. And Day keeps it in, though, and gives her... Team, another chance here close to the horizon goal. Day again Ooh. with the ball. And Day's, Day's just running over people now. That's another big collision there. And it's another horizon player who's down. And boy, things are getting a little rough out there. You just, you know, that's just how how bad both these teams want the, the championship, you know. 
And they're going for loose balls. They're going for free balls out there. And regardless of if an opposing player is there, and now they're calling over the the trainer again here. And, and nice to see the player get up on her own accord. The Getting train. a little bit of help off, but she's shaking it off. Going to head to the sideline and take a substitution. What a great training staff we have here. And they've, they've really taken good care of the girls today. And we've seen a lot of players go down here. And um, almost every single one of them has been able to go to the sideline, get the help they needed, and get back on the field to help their team win. So what a great job by the training staff here taking care of these girls. It's number six, Corey Ann Peterson re-entering the game. And she's replacing, again, another senior. That's uh, the captain, Megan Haynes, senior midfielder. So she's played a heck of a ball game today. You know, also not the way. Looks like she might have injured her, gotten hit in the face or something because they're inspecting her face over here on the sideline. Free kick taken by Horizon, but Christian manages to get the loose ball, and now they're trying to advance it up the side of the field, and they're going to get the throw in. Ball advanced up the sideline. Christian looking to get it into the middle of the field, but again, Horizon doing a great job of just clogging it up and not letting anything go through. And really making the job of Julia Degnan, the, the goalkeeper, pretty easy as they're able to just, you know, keep the pressure on the Patriots and not allow them to complete the passes that they need to to get a scoring opportunity. Chloe again make, trying to make a run here. Ball goes out of bounds. Let's see who they give the kick to. They're going to give it to Horizon here. And I believe that's going to be a corner kick. Horizon going to get the corner kick. And Christian setting up their defense because, you know, 11 minutes left here in the, in the second half. You certainly can't give up a goal. You need one. They take a quick corner. They get it into the box, but Christian able to kick it out of bounds, so it's going to set up another corner here with 11.30 left to go in the game. And Christian down one nothing to Horizon. What a close contest this has been, too. Yeah, you know, you see that goal in the first five minutes, and... And especially the way the play the play played out over the first maybe 20 minutes of the game, Horizon just pretty much dominating the action. So really give credit to Christian for hanging in there and playing D. And the header off the corner, it was a nice attempt, but it went high, bounced off the crossbar of the football. Set up. Now referee's going to make them wait a little bit. A substitution for Horizon is going to be made. Number three, Norgren onto the field for Horizon. So here comes Kaloe again making another run just outside the box. She bends it in. Only oh. a Christian player there, but a free ball. Great opportunity. Great setup by Horizon. And it's knocked home by the Panthers. And that could be the nail in the coffin. Patriots haven't been able to get much done offensively. And with a goal number two by the Panthers, that looks to close the deal. Looks like that was number 13, Deborah Lightcap, junior midfielder who scored the goal off the corner kick. It was Deborah Lightcap with a, a great shot there off of the open cross by off of the cross by Kaloe that went off of a Christian defender, came right outside the box, and Lightcap was there to nail it home. 
two nothing Horizon with just under 10 minutes to go. What we think is under 10 minutes to go, because as you know, in the last two minutes, the score, the time is only kept on the field. So we've had a lot of injuries this half. A lot of players have been down. So there could be time for Christian to maybe get two goals. And Horizon, you know, not showing any lightening up on the offense. They're still pushing forward and trying to get, get things done on offense. And here they go again. They get fouled, and Horizon's going to get the free kick at midfield. So under nine minutes left, Horizon leading 2-0, and uh, they're not done yet. Ooh, right. another big collision. Yeah, and Chloe goes down hard. That was number two, Anissa Patterson for Christian, who... Kind of got underneath her, caused Chloe to to fall down, and it's going to result in a free kick from about 30 yards away from the goal. Chloe takes the kick, just sails wide of the goal and out of bounds. So now it's going to be a goal kick for Christian. Christian down two nothing. Under 10 minutes to go or what we think is 10 minutes to go. And we see a new goalkeeper entering the game here for Horizon. And I'm not sure who that was, but Coach Matthew Chapman doing a good job of cycling his players in here. We've talked about it today. You know, he's keeping them fresh. He's giving these kids an uh, opportunity to get in the game. And, you know, with a 2 nothing lead, seven and a half minutes left, you want to make sure people have an opportunity to get the experience that they've worked all hard all year for. Yeah. Plus, the goaltender who who was in the game is now going to come on as a as either a defensive player or a, or an offensive player. But they're going to make a substitution here. And the goalkeeper was Julia D. Dignan. Now she's going to come on the field as wearing the number five. Uh, jersey. I'm not sure who we have in goal. <laughs> what a what a cut by her. She's quite a <laughs> offensive player as well. She can do it all. Play forward and a goaltender and a hard foul as the ball was going out of bounds. A hard foul by day. It's going to be Horizon ball. When uh, Catherine Day's been involved in a lot of those today, and uh, you know, six minutes left, two nothing, start tackling people like that, and you're bound to get some some rousing from the crowd here. Yeah, and she's one of the taller girls too on the squad, so I I I don't, you know, I think she's just so you know, <laughs> she's so tall out there. Uh, she has quite a height advantage in everything. Anissa so Patterson, number two there for Christian, drawing the yellow card as she she took out one of the Horizon players. So, you know, we've seen a lot of girls going down here in yeah. the second half, and they've pretty much all been in white. I think, uh, I think Horizon and Coach Matt Chapman will be happy to get out of this game alive. <laughs> Well, they got a 2 nothing lead. Uh, just a little over five minutes left to go here in the game. It looks like they're marching towards a Division Five championship for the Horizon Panthers. Here's a long kick by Christian. Out in front of everybody. Horizon just boots it back to center field. And Chloe is going to be called offsides. And 
it's going to be a free kick for Christian. Here it is. They take it. That's Courtney Marshall, number four, on the free kick. St stay tuned for the CIF San Diego TV postgame show where we will select our player of the game as well as wrap up all the action from this ball game. That's coming up on on uh, following the game on CIF San Diego TV. Heather Kaloe doing a good job of maneuvering around the defender. Oh, she finds an open defender just a little too far out in front of her, but it was going to be offsides anyways. Chipped it in nicely, but they're just a little ahead of the defense there and got whistled for it. 3.45 left here in the second quarter. Horizon Panthers looking to close out the sectional championship here in San Diego. And we got the Division Five boys championship coming up uh, next too from this venue at Modern Day High School. So please stay tuned for that. That next game is going to be Pacific Ridge and Borrego Springs. That's another one seed versus two seed matchup. Two strong teams coming in here looking to cap off good seasons. Pacific Ridge coming in undefeated on the year, 14-0-3. So they've been tied a couple times but haven't lost. Borrego Springs also looking strong coming in at 15-2-4. And, and I'm not... I'm not sure how many Borrego Springs or Pacific Ridge fans we do have here at Modern Day today, but that's quite a drive. So I, I bet a lot of people for both those schools will be tuning in to our broadcast. So we look forward to have you joining us here. As the winding minutes of this game is winding down, Horizon leads 2-0. 2.30 left to go here Catherine, in the game. Catherine Day puts it down the sideline looking to you know, dump it in and give one of her attackers a chance to make something happen. But as has been the case all day, Horizon defense quick to the ball and able to neutralize the attack. Yeah, and they've done a great job defensively. I think both these squads have done a great job defensively as well because you got to keep in mind Horizon scored their first goal five minutes into the into the match so um christian has definitely done a good job defensively uh, unfortunately they haven't been able they've had some offensive spurts but horizon just has really clamped down uh on the defensive side of the ball and really has made the christian offense really not a factor they've had a couple opportunities here but uh horizon's done a great job defending And nice to see, looks like number eight for Horizon, their senior captain, Megan Haynes, looking to check back in soon here. Almost another scoring opportunity, but. Christian almost had, but our, the new goaltender makes the save. And we, we haven't got a name on her. Ooh, and that's a, that's a good leading kick. It wasn't going to be offsides. Yeah. Uh, but I think Horizon's just happy to kinda let this clock play out. Certainly would take take an opportunity if it pre presents itself, but just as good as dumping it down into the zone and killing off a few more seconds of that clock, closing in on under two minutes left here in the in the game. Horizon Panthers two, Christian Patriots zero. Horizons making another substitution. They're definitely giving all their students an opportunity to get there out there on the field and have an opportunity of, of playing in a Division Five championship, which, which is great. And I think that's gonna do it. And the Horizon Panthers are your girls Division Five champion for the CIF San Diego section. They win two nothing over the Christian High Patriots. Was a heck of a ball game here, Joe. Thanks a lot for joining me. I'm Tom Plunkett here with Joe Minnick. I'd like to thank our producer, Andrew Lockard. And I'd also like to thank our cameraman. That's Ken up there up on the roof doing the heavy lifting for us, absorbing all that sun so all of us can be here in the shade happy and healthy.
Thank you very much from Matter Day High School, and we'll be right back with the player of the game interview. Fourth and 10 from the 41 yard line for St. Augustine. Kennedy dropping back to pass. Looking left, firing, incomplete no intended for Nolan. No penalty flags on the field. Mar Vista will take over on downs, and Jordan Lertik will take that knee. And the Mar Vista Mariners knock off the number two seeded St. Augustine Saints at Mesa College in a dominating performance on both sides of the football for Mar Vista. They trailed 14 to nothing and came back. Again, down 2 nothing, facing adversity, and they've really just turned the table around since game number three. Set an attack, great block made back inside the Maverick zone. A chance there by, uh, by Bosback back inside the Maverick zone. Ball attacked there by Bosback, a second opportunity by Bosback. Lift violation, call! Ah! Winner, oh. it's the over the, over the net call! Oh my goodness! Bosback reached over on the attack. A Maverick error wraps up the title for the Presentation Panthers. A 15-9 victory in game number five, and they wrap it up coming back from 2-0 down match-wise and take it three games to two. 36-35 and driving, and oh baby! Shrigley with the jam, and it was with emphasis. And it's the foul, and listen to these fans. Do you know who's standing up right behind us? Tony Bland, who is the head recruiter for San Diego State. I think he's drooling. Somebody get that man a napkin. Quick score on this drive. There goes a hand off to Zeller, trying to go straight ahead, but he is met by Wall. Now he breaks out to the outside, gets across the 30, 35, on the right, 40, midfield. He's running down the sidelines. He's going to go all the way, as he's at the 10, 5, touchdown. Patrick Zeller got he stood up at the line of scrimmage and broke out to his left to the far sidelines, and he was in a foot race, and he went all the way for the touchdown, broke a tackle, and made it nice and showed his speed as he got outside for the touchdown. Back in the backfield to the left is Campbell. Hernandez takes a snap, play action to Campbell. Looks down the field. Now here comes the pressure. He's going to be hit. He breaks the tackle, rolls left. Now he's going to cut up field. He's going to break another tackle, and then another tackle down the sideline. Gets a block inside the five. What a touchdown! Hernandez goes 33 yards in spectacular fashion, breaking four tackles along the way, including two in the backfield, and Hilltop has tied this one up at 29. And reasonably so, he's been doing a good job of leading this offense. Looking for his first touchdown pass of the season for Ray Hudson, and Ray Hudson gets both feet inside the end zone. Touchdown Foothill. Like you said earlier, it's 6-2 body frame, and can probably, in what, you, what we just saw there was getting Randy Moss, was what we call getting Moss. Um, clearly just leaped over the defender there, landed both feet in, feet in bounds. Grant with a big, strong defensive rebound. He brings it back down the floor again in another slam dunk. Jeremy Grant can run the point, and he can fly. Huge dunk, two big dunks in the last Bullard minute. Bullard trying to close it out. Deep ball, up in the air, Cram. Bringing it back, Arbizo. Cram over in three, free opportunity. Look for Rodabaugh, no, pass middle, Weimer! Ball game. 25-19, Foothill wins it three games to one. Because this kid has definitely proven that he he, um, he can make things happen here in this ball game. They will go with him, Bula Graft on a stretch run, just breaking tackles. The little man is in the clear to Torrey territory, the 25, the 20. The 10, the 5, touchdown Knights. What a run, the freshman, Bula Graft. Ooh, I tell you what. There were at least three times on that on that run that he should have gone down or he should have been wrapped up. Missed tackles there. Cost, cost La Jolla Country Day as Bula Graft, the freshman running back for Bishops, is able to take it in. And, and that was a determined run there, Andy, by. So first and ten, Brandon Lewis in the shotgun. 
has time to throw. And he will fire, and he has a man diving catch. Did he hold on to it? He did. What a catch from Kendall Keys. And that may be the KBC Sports Player of the Week. <laughs> what a catch, by He laid himself wow. out there, and a great throw, as you said. Read, read it nicely to Lewis and really caught his receiver on the go and just kind of put it out there right on the outstretch of his fingertips. He laid out and he made it. He might be called upon to make a crucial kick. Second down and eight after the two-yard gain on the receiver screen. And Ooh. Paulson fires across the right seat for Jack Finney who makes a catch. Stiff arms of Fender at the 50 and is finally brought down at the Amador Valley 45-yard line. Flags flying late They're on the go play. For fourth and three. They figure three is easier to get than the field goal at this point. And it's Paulson looking for Finney. Right seam, side, right seam, touchdown. Jack Finney makes the catch. Bounces off a defender. A 23-yard pass and catch from Paulson to Finney. And the Foothill Falcons are back out in front. They certainly are. Finney lining up a tight end. I had a feeling that Paulson was going to look right side there as Chase Miller was lined up, receiver far side. But instead it was Finney straight to the post. And Paulson picks him out in stride again. The third catch on the drive for Finney. Give it to Tyree on an exchange against the zone. Do a little three-man weave. This is Tyrell back with it. Tyrell's going to go lob back door. Tyree Robinson with a flush. Now that was nice. Very nice design play. Waba. Waba back there. Bogart takes a snap. He's going to run the play. He's going to throw. He's got a man open at the 10. It's under thrown. It's incomplete. No, or is it caught? It is a catch. Wow, juggling catch inside the five-yard line. Maliga, was that Maliga pulling that one in? It is Maliga. Boy, that ball was deflected by. Fourth and 10 from the 41 yard line for St. Augustine. Kennedy dropping back to pass. Looking left, firing, incomplete okay. intended for Nolan. No penalty flags on the field. Mar Vista will take over on downs. And Jordan Lertique will take that knee. And the Mar Vista Mariners knock off the number two seeded St. Augustine Saints at Mesa College in a dominating performance on both sides of the football for Mar Vista. They trailed 14 to nothing and came back. Again, down 2 0, facing adversity. And they've really just turned the table around since game number three. Set an attack, great block made back inside the Maverick zone. A chance there by, uh, by Bosback back inside the Maverick zone. Ball attack there by Bosback. A second opportunity by Bosback. Lift violation, call. Uh, winner. Oh. It's the over, the over the net call. Oh my goodness. Bosback reached over on the attack. A Maverick Air wraps up the title for the Presentation Panthers. A 15-9 victory in game number five, and they wrap it up coming back from 2-0 down match-wise and take it three games to two. 36-35 and driving, and oh, baby! Shrigley with a jam, and it was with emphasis. And it's the foul, and listen to these fans. Do you know who's standing up right behind us? Tony Bland, who is the head recruiter for San Diego State. I think he's drooling. Somebody get that man a napkin. Quick score on this drive. There goes a hand off to Zeller, trying to go straight ahead, but he is met by Wall. Now he breaks out to the outside, gets across the 30, 35, on the right, 40, midfield. He's running down the sidelines. He's going to go all the way. As he's at the 10-5, touchdown! Patrick Zeller got he stood up at the line of scrimmage and broke out to his left to the far sidelines. And he was in a foot race and he went all the way for the touchdown. Broke a tackle and made it nice and showed his speed as he got outside for the touchdown. Back in the backfield to the left is Campbell. Hernandez takes a snap, play action to Campbell. Looks down the field. Now here comes the pressure. He's going to be hit. He breaks the tackle, rolls left. Now he's going to cut up field. He's going to break another tackle, and then another tackle down the sideline. Gets a block inside the five. What a touchdown! (laughs) 
Hernandez goes 33 yards in spectacular fashion, breaking four tackles along the way, including two in the backfield, and Hilltop has tied this one up at 29. And reasonably so, he's been doing a good job of leading this offense. Looking for his first touchdown pass of the season for Ray Hudson. And Ray Hudson gets both feet inside the end zone. Touchdown Foothill. Like you said earlier, it's 6-2 body frame and can probably, and what, you, what we just saw there was getting Randy Moss, was what we call getting Moss. Um, clearly just leaped over the defender there, landed both feet in, feet in bounds. Grant with a big, strong defensive rebound. He brings it back down the floor again in another slam dunk. Jeremy Grant can run the point, and he can fly. Huge dunk, two big dunks in the last Bullard minute. Bullard trying to close it out. Deep ball, up in the air, Cram. Bringing it back, Arbizo. Cram over in three, free opportunity. Look for Rotobaugh, no, pass middle, Weimer! Ball game. 25-19, Foothill wins it three games to one. Because this kid has definitely proven that he... he um, he can make things happen here in this ballgame. They will go with him. Bula Graft on a stretch run, just breaking tackles. The little man is in the clear to Tory Territory. The 25, the 20, the 10, the 5. Touchdown, Knights. What a run, the freshman, Bula Graft. Ooh, I tell you what. There were at least three times on that, on that run that he should have gone down or he should have been wrapped up. Missed tackles there, cost cost La Jolla Country Day as Bola Graft, the freshman running back for Bishops, is able to take it in. And, and that was a determined run there, Andy, by. So first and ten, Brandon Lewis in the shotgun, has time to throw, and he'll fire, and he has a mad diving catch. Did he hold on to it? He did. What a catch from Kendall Keys. And that may be... The KBC Sports Player of the Week. <laughs> what a catch by he laid himself wow. out there and a great throw, as you said. Read, read it nicely to Lewis and really caught his receiver on the go and just kind of put it out there right on the outskirts of his fingertips. He laid out and he made it. No he doubt. might be called upon to make a crucial kick. Second down and eight after the two-yard gain on the receiver screen. And Ooh. Paulson fires across the right seat for Jack Finney, who makes a catch. Stiffs on the defender at the 50 and is finally brought down at the Amador Valley 45-yard line. Flags flying later to go play. for it. Fourth and three. They figure three is easier to get than the field goal at this point. And it's Paulson looking for Finney. Right seam, side, right seam, touchdown. Jack Finney makes the catch. Bounces off a defender. A 23-yard pass and catch from Paulson to Finney. And the Foothill Falcons are back out in front. They certainly are. Finney lining up a tight end. I had a feeling that Paulson was going to look right side there as Chase Miller was lined up. Receive a far side. But instead it was Finney straight to the post. And Paulson picks him out in stride again. The third catch on the drive for Finney. give it to Tyree on an exchange against the zone. Do a little three-man weave. This is Tyrell back with it. Tyrell's going to go lob back door. Tyree Robinson with a flush. Now that was nice. Very nice design play. Uwaba. Uwaba back there. Bogart takes a snap. He's going to run the play. He's going to throw. He's got a man open at the 10. It's under thrown. It's incomplete. No, or is it caught? It is a catch. Wow, juggling catch inside the five-yard line. Maliga, was that Maliga pulling that one in? It is Maliga. Boy, that ball was deflected by, by one of the Falcons. And then Maliga, he lands on the ground and pulls it in. What a catch. Set up with three men in the backfield, back to the wing. This time inside counter to Telefaro. No, they're going to throw this one. He's got a man open. And a great, what a great, what a catch! What a grab by tight end Joe Gigantino. He must have bobbled that ball four times in the air, and he was actually tipped by the defender and had the presence of mind to keep his concentration and make the grab. Unbelievable catch. And the ball at the 29-yard line of the Eagles, and you can see the defense. They're still bewildered. How did he come up with that Unfazed, grab? Unfazed, even with two defenders around him and four big. That's so unconventional for a guy to handle the ball so well. January! Oh. With a one-hand jam. 
He was not going to be denied there. Coming over was Milmo. Bradshaw Christian is going to bring the starting unit out on the field one more time just to take a knee. Ten seconds left. They better hurry it up. Actually, they're going to try a field goal for Lawson. They're not. They're going to run out of time. Are they going to take? There's a snap, and they aren't even going to get the kickoff. They tried to hustle Lawson out there for a field goal opportunity to see if they could get her one. But it does not matter. They don't get the punt off in time. Drew Rickert just got the Gatorade shower on the sideline. Bradshaw Christian is your winner. 62-6, to six, the final score. They are your D6 Titleist this year here in 2000. Five seconds left, clock winding down. Poway has won the title. 56 to nothing over the Vista Panthers. The championship goes to Poway. Well, your double wing T option offense down by five. They're going to have to spread it out. They go with three receivers to the near side. That's the short side. One solo left. Back to throw. McHugh. McHugh under pressure. Rolls out of it. Now he's dumped and dropped. And that's the last thing they could handle. And that's not what they could do. Bellerman now can't stop the clock. Fourth. Three, and that is going to do it. Santa Margarita coming back from the dead has won the Division I State Bowl Championship 42-37 in an improbable comeback against Bellarmine of San Jose. And the Bellarmine players on the field, on their knees, just absolutely dejected after playing just a, just a gut-wrenching football game. About how he's going to throw the football on this play. <laughs> Westlake might have been daring him to do so. Just joking, though, folks. Peros is going to take a knee. He does. That's going to wrap it up. Well, I'll tell you what. Westlake had an outstanding year. They win the Southern Section title. Never easy. They went 14-0.